Alright, in this video, let's describe the locus of the mod of Z minus Z1 is equal to the mod of Z minus Z2. Now this equation will appear quite abstract until we see it for what it is on the complex plane. But before I do this, let me note that Z1 and Z2 are fixed points. So if I draw myself now a set of axes to represent the complex plane with the imaginary on the vertical axis and the real on the horizontal axis. So let's say that the fixed point Z1 is located here and my variable point Z is arbitrarily located here then the vector representation of Z1 is a vector that goes from the origin to the coordinates of Z1. My apologies, this is Z, not Z1. So the vector representation of Z is a vector from the origin to the coordinates of Z. Now Z minus Z1 is equivalent to Z plus negative Z1. And to represent negative Z1, all I do is reverse this vector. So instead of it pointing from the origin to the coordinates of Z1, it points from the coordinates of Z1 back to the origin. And I'll delete the green vector for clarity. So now Z minus Z1 is simply the vector addition of the cyan vector with the red vector. So the resultant vector is a vector that goes from the coordinates of Z1 to Z. So let me label this as Z minus Z1 and I shall delete the other vectors for clarity. Now let's say Z2 is another fixed point here. And so Z minus Z2 is a vector that points from Z2 back to Z. And now what this equation is saying is that the length of this vector and the length of this vector must equal each other. So wherever I put this variable point Z, this distance from Z1 to Z and this distance from Z2 to Z must always be equal. Okay, and just for good measure, if Z was down here, then this distance and this distance must be equal. So what this means is the locus of Z is a straight line that sits between these two points. And if I draw a straight line to connect these two points, the locus is perpendicular to this line and it bisects the line that connects Z1 and Z2. Now there is a formal proof to show that this locus exists, but it's too long and boring for me to go through here but I can use an example to show you how to find an exact equation for this locus. Okay, let's have a look at the example of the modulus of Z plus 2 minus 3i is equal to the modulus of Z minus 4 minus i. Now before we start we should always write this in terms of the mod of Z minus Z1 is equal to the mod of Z minus Z2. So from the left hand side if I take a negative out of the 2 minus 3i I will get minus of negative 2 plus 3i. So I have the mod of Z minus minus 2 plus 3i is equal to the mod of z and if I take a negative out of the f uh, minus 4 minus i 
I get minus outside of 4 plus i. Okay, so we've deduced that z1 is equal to minus 2 plus 3i and that z2 is equal to 4 plus i. So on the complex plane, z1 has the coordinates of negative 2 plus 3i and z2 has the coordinates of 4 plus i and I'll just write the coordinates in negative 2, 3, 4, 1 and if I draw a straight line between these two points then as we found before the locus will be a straight line that bisects this line and is perpendicular to it so let's find the equation of this locus in terms of x and y or more precisely y equals mx plus c alright so z in Cartesian form is written as x plus iy so if I call this equation 1 and then substitute this expression for z into 1 I will get the modulus of x plus iy plus 2 minus 3i is equal to the mod of x plus iy minus 4 minus i and let's collect the real and the imaginary terms together so in the next line I write the mod of x plus 2 and then plus i outside of y minus 3 is equal to the mod of x minus 4 plus i outside of y minus 1. So the modulus of this can be written as the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So, so this can be expressed as the square root of x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to the square root of x plus sorry x minus 4 squared plus y minus 1 squared so now if I take the square of both sides I get x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 4 squared plus y minus 1 squared and now the next bit is a bit tedious because I'll have to perform binomial expansion of each of these terms but let's persist with it so I get x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared uh, minus 2y plus 1 and now since I've got uh, x squareds and y squareds on both sides of the equation these can be eliminated so the x squared cancels out the x squareds and the y squared on the left cancels the y squared on the right and all I do now is to get the y terms on the left hand side and everything else on the right hand side so on the left hand side I get 6y the 2y over here comes over to become a positive 2y and this is equal to negative 8x the 4x over here becomes a negative 4x on the right hand side the plus 16 remains as it is the 9 comes over to become a negative 9 the 4 comes over to be a negative 4 and the 1 remains as it is so this becomes negative 4y is equal to minus 12x plus 
Okay, so 16 minus 9 is 7, minus 4 is 3, plus 1 is 4. And then if I divide both sides by negative 4, I'll get y is equal to 3x minus 1. And this equation is the locus. So as we can see, the locus has an equation of y is equal to 3x minus 1, with minus 1 being the y-intercept. Alright, let's quickly look at the case where the mod of z plus 2 minus 3i is less than or equal to the mod of z minus 4 minus i. So what this means is that if I place my arbitrary z, say here, and the distance between z1 and z, and the distance between z2 and z don't necessarily have to be equal but this distance must be less than this distance. So in this instance it's all points that are closer to z1 than they are to z2. So what this means is the locus becomes this purple shaded region that includes the cyan line but it goes off to infinity in the direction perpendicular to the cyan locus. Alright, so I hope this video has helped you to better understand this particular locus problem. Please give me a like if this has been useful to you and please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more free tutorials. In the meantime, best of luck with your math studies and I shall see you next time.